Hey, it's Matt Fury from Avid here at Sunday. It's 2020. Do joined by my good friends, editor Harry Yoon, assistant editor Irene Chun. Uh, they're here with screenwriter and director Lee Isaac Chung's film, Minari. Uh, Harry, tell us a little bit about the film. So it's a immigrant story set in the 1980s about a Korean American family that moves from Los Angeles to Arkansas because the father has dreams of starting a farm and it creates a little bit of chaos in the family. So it's a drama comedy about are they going to stay together through a difficult time? And it's a really beautiful American film. Now, Irene, this is the first time that you've worked with Harry, I believe. Uh, being his assistant, you know, what was it that you know you came to find out? Like, okay, this is this is how how Harry likes to work, and what I need to do as an assistant. Um, well, I've only ever PA'd on network TV shows, so I only really knew the TV workflow. So um, thankfully, Harry's worked on both. So I've had to ask him a lot of questions of, oh, well, is this like what it's like on a TV show, or is this what it's like on a uh, on a film? And like he told me what a DCP was and like reels versus acts. And so there was quite a bit of a learning curve, but thankfully he was cool with asking or me asking questions and answering them so that, yeah. Harry, do you find you have to explain to younger uh, assistant editors and editors what reels are? Yeah, often, <laughs> especially the origin of them. Um, but you know what's great about Irene is she's got the work ethic of two people. And so she was able to pick things up really quickly. So you're no stranger to big budget films. Uh, last time I think we talked was about uh, the film First Man. Mm -hmm. um, how does working in an independent film differ in terms of workflow than something on a, on a major motion picture? Well, other than the challenges of living on a budget, um, one of the things that was different on this was uh, we didn't have the funds to rent a Nexus. And so as, uh, and, and we both were on, had different systems, so we had to work off of drives. and. One of the great things was like we had no issues with relinking, um, updating bins, you know, transfer, swapping things back and forth, and so it was actually relatively painless considering. Uh, and it was also nice to have like two backups that we, just in case, as, along with a third. So just for peace of mind, it was not bad. Okay, and Irene, you talked about the differences in working in television work than working on a, a film. What, what were the differences you found there? Um, Definitely. Well, even on the TV shows, we had a nexus, and so having to adjust to, um, you know, not having one of those. Uh, but I had actually worked on mostly indie films to get all of my days to get into the union, so I was that part of it wasn't super duper difficult. But um, one of the things that comes to mind is like talking about reels again, um, like how real timings work versus act timings, and like actually starting at hour one when you get to the first reel versus it starting on the first frame of picture if you're sending things off via reel. Um, I've had to ask a couple of assistant editors too, um, like, hey, like how does this work? Just to confirm um, before I send anything out. And so, yeah, and I think the pacing of it too, at least with TV, was really, really fast all the time because we were pushed up against network times. Um, so, you know, the assistant editors and uh, I would be delivering drives at like 12, 12 2, 2 in the morning um, versus here. Like we had a little bit more time to work on the cut. Um, we had 10 weeks of director's cut and all that versus, you know, like with the TV show, you only have a week with the director and then the rest of the time with the, with the showrunner. But um, yeah, so it was really cool to be able to work on one story and really be able to refine it and sit with the cut for a while versus... Um, you know, like not having as much time because you're airing on Thursday or Friday, so. Harry, how did working with Lee as the director differ from other directors you've worked with before? What was his process like with you in terms of maybe dailies or refining the cut with you? Well, I think his process was pretty consistent with, you know, other directors where we would work through scene by scene. But, I mean, on a personal level, it was really meaningful for, for both of us because it's essentially a story that resonates with both of our families. And so it was probably one of the best experiences I've ever had because uh, we both kept talking about like what it would be like for our parents to watch this film um, because it's so personal and it's so meaningful. Um, it's so funny because we were talking about all the screenings that we had coming up, um, including Sundance, and one of the things he mentioned is the one that he was most nervous about was screening for his father <laughs> because he's portrayed in the film. Oh, yeah, yes, but that went really, really well, and so he felt like after that everything's going to be gravy, and so, yeah, I mean, he's super excited to be here, but like that was like the most personal, most meaningful screening for him. Yeah, it would have to be. Yeah. Uh, when you found out that you were getting into Sundance, I'm not sure what kind of shape the film was at that point, but what did you have to do to sort of prep for getting the film ready for the festival? Well, I think we were in pretty good shape. I think uh, I was sending him scenes all the way while he was shooting, and so he was giving me feedback and also adjusting production according to some of the stuff that he was getting. So it was a really collaborative 
uh, effort all the way through production. And so by the time we got the director's cut, he wasn't that surprised. I think, you know, at, you know, as with all directors, there's always that moment of like, you know, depression that hits when you think about everything that you didn't get. But he recovered really quickly from it, I think partly because he'd edited a lot of his own stuff. And so he knew the score. And so, uh, and also um, what really benefited us was we had a lot of uh, temp score from our composer because he'd started writing sketches very early on. And so the film started to find its voice pretty early in the director's cut. So by the time we submitted, we were in really, really good shape. We'd, al we'd already done two feedback screenings with small friends and family groups. So we were really confident. So with it being a smaller crew, smaller budget, did you find that as a picture editor, you were leaning in more, doing more temp effects, more temp music, more sound editing, sound design in the, with the Avid than you would normally do on a, a big motion picture? Yeah, you usually don't have, uh, unfortunately, a lot of that sort of support earlier on. They're usually waiting closer to lock cut. Um, but uh, one of the things that was really useful and kind of an eye opener for, um, for Isaac was seeing how temp effects could change timings of performances. So we used a lot of um, fluid morph and um, I would do things like I would animate um, characters um, that would come in later in the take into the take and he was just he just thought that it was really magical because it wasn't sort of like necessarily comping something in that wasn't there but being able to uh, change critical timings so that things felt like they were flowing and for him it was a real eye-opening experience and being able to show him that we could just do all that stuff on the Avid was awesome. So Irene it's very exciting being here at Sundance uh, you know, to have one of your first films or your first film to be something that brings you to Sundance is pretty amazing. I know there's a lot of people out there watching they're going to be like Okay, that's, I want to do that. Um, you're still so relatively new to the industry, but um, probably have some great insight into like just breaking in and getting in. What advice would you have for somebody that's just coming out of film school that says, okay, how do I get to where I Irene is today? Um, I mean, definitely being open to uh, reaching out to people you don't know. I mean, that's how I got my first PA job. I had cold emailed someone right out of, uh, right when I finished my classes, and he was nice enough to help me. And um, and then I met Harry through uh, the Ace Holiday Party after I got the internship, and I hit him up for lunch afterwards. And so, yeah, just not being afraid to do that, and also when you do get the opportunity, being willing to put in the extra work, you know. And, um, yeah, like, you, you might have to, you know, like, stay late a little bit and, uh, and do that, but I feel like it's all part of making the entire process, you know, come together. And in the end, it is all for the work that you're doing working on so like just for the benefit of the film or for the benefit of the tv show that you're working on so just being willing to put in that work and to be you know I feel like when you're personally attached to it it makes you work even harder so and like work obviously working with great people too you work that much harder so finding a good group and also not being afraid of being told no you know so you know one other thing is don't be afraid to stand out because one of the things that Irene would do is she would wear a custom bow tie to every ace event I remember that. so everyone would remember who she was and so and sometimes suspenders that match so like so being so standing out makes you pe makes people remember you and you're like oh yeah you're that girl in the bow tie and so so it really helps when uh, especially when you're meeting a lot of people who meet a lot of people so well, I, certainly Minari stands out. I've heard a lot of talk about it already. Congratulations on getting the film into Sundance, Harry and Irene. Uh, that's just one of the amazing stories you're going to hear at Sundance with Avid. So stay tuned to our social channels, and you're going to hear more just like this.